so good evening dear parents i hope you're well i hope uh, you've had a good day i just want to welcome you all for this orientation meeting apparently um we saw it worth to have it because of the coming program for the teenagers tomorrow so that at least we can equip ourselves get to know what is it that they are going to be taught or rather what is it that uh, they need to know from us as parents so even as we begin i would love us to have um maybe a word of prayer yes a word of prayer um i know maybe we might have different faiths but uh let's just have a word of prayer <laughs> yes so rahab you can pray for us from your end i'll be very grateful let us pray our father in the name of jesus we thank you for this evening that you've given us thank you for preserving us and keeping us the whole the whole day even as we start this session we welcome you to to guide uh, sk as uh, she takes us through this lesson i pray that you give her the wisdom the knowledge the understanding to be able to share everything that you have us you know understand as parents on how to bring up sober and responsible children that will be a blessing even to the nations of the earth we thank you father that whatever we are taught we're going to be able to impact Clement, that you're not just hear us, but we are doers. Even for the rest that are supposed to be in this meeting, I thank you because you are hastening their steps, and uh, they'll be here with us as soon as possible. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, Rahab. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that word of prayer. Okay, parents, we are going to have an interactive session, so don't. Uh, really hide yourself behind the camera. If you can have your camera on, well and good. And if you can uh, set your mic on, well and good, because we, we need to talk Kidogo before we go to the real, real class. So we're going to introduce ourselves. And this is the way we're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to say our names and the number of maybe children you have and their age group. And then you can tell us if you are an animal yeah that you know parents so well or rather parents so if you are an animal how which kind of an animal would you be in terms of parenting yes i know you've understood me in terms of parenting which kind of animal would you be and why okay mr seth could you please open up this session and maybe tell us something about yourself you tell us your name and the number of children you have and their age or if your parents to be <laughs> and the kind of an, an animal <laughs> that you'll parent like if you are an animal um, my name is Seth Dugonzo Chitai mm -hmm. Forgive me, I'm in the kitchen trying to cook as I as, as, as I as we interact Amazing. Uh, I have two sons, mm -hmm. uh, 11 and uh, 9. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife is somewhere in town, mm -hmm. trying to make her way, her way home. OK. Uh, besides uh, my two children, mm -hmm. I lead a youth ministry mm -hmm. uh, called Aflame Mission Team. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do uh, a schools ministry. Mm -hmm. We go to high schools and universities. Mm. And trust in God for capacity for us to be able to also uh, come down to uh, primary schools. Amazing. And uh, so my interest in this, in this uh, session is, uh, is diverse. It goes well imagine. beyond uh, my two sons. I can imagine. Amazing. If I were an animal, I don't know what I would be. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine. Mm -hmm. I cannot really quite uh, 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 figure out. Mm -hmm. So just forgive this animal. <laughs> it is well, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> and even thank you for helping out at home. <laughs> okay. Yes, <laughs> Rahab. 
can you just share with us your experience your part i'm so sorry my my light is not very good mm. uh so my name is rahab wanderi i'm a mother of a one nine year old son i think he's turning 10 in november so i think i classify him as 10. uh beside that i have 40 other children i mentor in a children's home so I'm a mother of 41. <laughs> I'm a mother of 41. <laughs> oh God. And then beside that, I've had Mr. Seth. Uh, uh, he deals with high school. I also deal with high school students. Mm. Uh, we are doing financial financial literacy in high school. Mm. So it's also important for me to be able to go through these classes because you know I'll encounter a lot of kids out there. Mm. Uh, what else? Um, 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 an animal. I think I'll be a leopard. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it can act very, very calm, mm-hmm. but then once it's uh, it starts strongly, it can decide to change. <laughs> <laughs> when become so furious, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so depending on the situation, you can I can camouflage, but then to an extent, then I'll rise. <laughs> so yeah, that that's basically it. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. I don't know if we've got Jasmine back. Jasmine, okay. can you hear us? Well, I don't know if she can hear us. Anyway, so I, I just want us to go straight to what we are talking about today, which is uh, orientation. Basically, we are doing this orientation because of the teens program that we have tomorrow. And I know, Rahab, you have a number of children coming on board. I don't know, Mr. Seth, if you have a number of children coming on board, it will be grateful to bring them on board. So um, what is it's going what? to happen? Yeah. Sorry? It's time tomorrow, tomorrow what time? at 8 p.m. at such a time. Okay. Yes. So um, I, I just want to share with you my screen so that maybe we can begin. And before that, let me just tell you also about myself. I'm a mother of three daughters and I have a, a lot of children that I also mentor and parent. Besides that also, um, We've had a son that we've parented in our own house. He's now past high school. He's joining us this soon. So with all that experience, it has, um, it has made me to think like uh, the way parents are being told every day, talk to your children, talk to your children. So one day I sat down and I'm like, okay, so how do we even begin talking to them? How do I even start talking to them? You know, one time they are my, my, my daughter came home and she was singing this song. This, these are my private parts. She was taught in school. And I was like, excuse me, <laughs> that song is too much for this house, you know? And then it just sang to me that, you know, uh, she needs to know her private parts. And I was like, but it's still too early to tell them about it until, until you learn the things that are happening to our children out there. Then you're like, what? I think they need to be informed. So it made me to research, it made me to look out, it made me to work out. And I got, I got a way that we can be able to learn how to, you know, how to begin those talks, even to initiate before even your child asks you, mommy, where does children come from? Or mommy, why, you know, why do people get married? You are able to initiate such, such conversation regarding sexuality when they are still yeah. So as you have said, this is just an orientation class for the upcoming class. Uh, and that's me. And my main mission is actually to help our children make sober and responsible decisions regarding their sexuality from a young age. And maybe you can ask me, you know, well, our, our program, how do we run our program? So this program is called My Journey. And it is out of the fact that we in par- parenting is a journey. We don't start or end it at some point. It is a journey that we go through for a very long period. I think we stop parenting when you are dead. <laughs> I had a, a parent say that you just stop parenting when you are dead. 
So it is a journey that takes, you know, time until we are dead. And as you people have actually shared with us, you, when you are parenting, you're not just parenting your own. When we are called to parent, we're not just parenting our own children, but you're also parenting other children who God has disposed in our area of life, even as we continue living. So in this program, my journey, we have two programs. We have a parenting program uh, where we, we basically talk on how to help our children be able to make sober decisions regarding their sexuality, regarding sex, love, and relationship. That is the parenting program. And that is where we are today. So, and then tomorrow we have a mentorship program for teens. So basically when we do mentorship program for teens, we teach them on self-awareness and, um, and purpose, self-awareness and purpose. In most cases, when we do that, we find that our children are able to, uh, they are able to bring up sexuality issues. So we, 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 we have opened it up to an extent that we are able to talk about sexuality when we are talking to, when we are mentoring the kids. So on to, oh, you can ask me maybe why, why, why parents? Why parents? Because I have had people who are telling me, no, these programs, teach them to the children. You know, as parents, but you see, when I, I, I looked at it, I've, I've made a picture here. I don't know if you can be able to see the picture on my slide. Maybe someone, Selim Karibu. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, maybe someone can tell me if you can be able to see the, the picture on my slide. I have put a photo of the Pride uh, Movement. Pride Movement, uh, I don't know how many of us know about the Pride Movement. It's a movement that has come up right now to, and they're saying that they're celebrating diversity. So they are actually, you know, they appreciate the fact that there is LGBTQ, uh, people can marry from same sex. They, they are, you know, they, they are trying to bring up a movement that it's about, you know, fighting for rights and all that. So I, I just wanted to bring it so that we can also see as parents, these are things that we need to make ourselves aware of. When we see our children wearing those rainbow colors, when we see people wearing those rainbow colors, do we know the meaning? What, do we know what, what is moving on? So when you become a parent, why a parent? Because as a parent, you are the first teacher to your child. You're the first teacher to your child. And being the first teacher to your child, imagine this is the child that you're the one who gave back to. So if you taught that child how to walk, you are able to teach them how to speak. You are able to teach them to go to church, to talk, I mean to eat. You're able to teach them, even academic wise, you're able to teach them how to maybe number things and all that. So why, why not their sexuality aspect? Why not their sexuality aspect? So I believe parents are first teachers to their children. Not only me, I believe, but that is the fact that parents are their first teachers to their children. Another thing is that parents, the more they talk to their children regarding sexuality, they build very good uh, trust with them. They build a very good bond. And when they build such a bond, they become the referral point to their children. Before your child make any decision, they are able to come back to you to refer and ask you, mom, dad, is this the thing? Is it really the way it's supposed to go? And parents also are the safest circle a child can have. There are so many people who are passing values outside here. They're passing, you know, all sorts of information, call it. But parents are the safest people. You cannot tell your child to just throw themselves, you know, maybe uh, under the train, you know. You, 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 you want to be the safest person they can have around. And besides that, as a parent, you are an expert. Yeah, having, having the fact that you have children makes you an, uh, an expert in the sexuality world. I know you understand what I mean. It makes you an expert in the se sexuality world. So, and as parents also, you are able to instill values to your child, okay? You're able to instill values to your child, the values that you uphold. And uh, when we normally organize this program, sometime we organize programs whereby we help parents to clarify their own values because there are parents who, who don't know what really they believe in. And if they really know what they believe in, then they're also unable to pass it to, to their children. So no, we normally have a class like that one to just help parents to clarify their values and pass it on to, uh, to their children. And also 
uh, we, we are talking to parents so that we can give them courage to talk. We can give them courage to talk. I'll tell you the reason why we need to give parents courage to talk. Uh, we are trying to give parents courage to talk because sexuality is a very important growth aspect in any human life, okay? As I mentioned earlier, we, we teach our children about spirituality. We take them to school to grow academically. We, we maybe orient them, rent them to grow socially, but many a times we fail in their sexuality aspect of life. We don't want to discuss the sexuality aspect of their life. And, and while all the, this thing, the whole thing about sexuality is a common factor. All of us are sexual beings, yeah? All of us are sexual beings. So uh, being the fact that we are sexual beings, um, when, when you just walk around, I'm sure when you, when you meet someone, you, you look at them and you don't want, you can obviously look at them and see this is a woman, this is a man, you know? You can obviously see this is a, a child, this is an adult, all right? Because we are sexual beings, it is, it is something that is common in all of us, but still, it has become something private. It is also a private matter. So uh, that's, why, that's why we are we are talking about sexuality today. And another reason why we are talking to, to parents so that they can have courage is because this thing has been a taboo all along. If I ask all of you, all of us who are here, uh, how did you learn about sexuality? How did you learn about sex growing up? I'm sure you will have very, very crazy, crazy notions, yeah? Maybe you read in a book, maybe you, you were introduced by a friend, maybe you, and it, it was just a crazy scenario. Why? Because it was a taboo to talk about sexuality just openly. And even, um, I remember there's a friend of mine who told me that uh, something like uh, menstrual periods, she came to learn about uh, menstrual period in a very funny way, in a very funny way from the auntie. And uh, it made her shy away from the whole thing. So, because it was a taboo, it was a taboo to just sit down with your parents and start discussing matters to do with sex, matters to do with your sexuality and all that. So you just grow, you just grow and become. And also religion has made us people who, you know, we shy away from the sexuality talk. So uh, technology has come. We cannot hide away from technology and we need to get courage to talk because of the aspect of technology. Technology has come and it is, teaching our children every kind of things. Technology does not come with values. Values can only be gotten by, from parents. So let, uh, that is why we are encouraging parents to do what? To talk. We are also talking about sexuality. I mean, we are encouraging parents also to talk to their children about sexuality because we want them to know how and when to talk. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, many a times we are told, talk to your children, talk to your children. Parents, you're not talking to your children. But then you ask yourself, how do I even begin? What do I even say? Where? When? At, you know, we ask ourselves all those sorts of questions. And that is why we are here today. And another reason that we make has to make us talk is because of the poverty level. Yeah. Agnes, please mute on your end and welcome. Mute. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so poverty, poverty has, is crippling our economy. Why? Because of the rise in maybe teenage pregnancy, not even maybe, but teenage pregnancy. Many children are dropping out of school. I'm going to just share with you a statistic about that shortly. Uh, this is the reality of what is happening in our nation right now. This is the reality of what is happening in our nation. I was just looking at this statistic and it is the most recent one. Yeah, the rate of how HIV and AIDS have gone high among children between the age of 15 to 20 years. Uh, and can you imagine this? The fact that 98 girls, okay, get infected every week. And then the teenage pregnancy is between the age of 10 to 19 years. By the, it is, a, an, a, it is a high likely that a girl would get pregnant before their 19th birthday. Look at that sad scenario. And what, where does that lead them to? It leads them to dropping out of school. It leads them to, you know, either early marriages and it leads them to a lot of stigmatization. It leads them to poverty at the end of the day. And now, 
I was just looking at this figure and I was, I was asking myself, where are we heading to as a nation? One out of five girls currently, okay, get pregnant every month. One out of five girls, you can imagine. And uh, our, our standing rate, out of the many girls we have in this nation, 18% of them, 18% of them fall pregnant before they reach 19 years before they reach 19 years. And uh, COVID is the one that hit us most. And that was, uh, we went up to 22%. Yes, we went up to 22%. But now the current one that is also shocking in January, between January and February of 2022, this year, we had 45,724 girls falling pregnant between the age of 10 and 19. That is now the worrying figure, 10 to 19 years. Yeah, and the main cause was led into drugs and alcohol, uh, sexting, which is the subject we are going to learn tomorrow with them. And actually sexting is pornography, it's nothing, nothing different. It's just pornography, only that in this case, they are pretending that they are not watching pornography, but they are, they are watching pornography. And the boy-girl relationship, uh, gender-based violence are some of the reasons, and rape. Uh, I will talk about sexting later in one of our, um, as we go on, we'll talk about it. Uh, because I want us to have an interactive session in a few minutes. So I'm just going to brush through the, my slides and then I can open it up. So in our discussion today, we were supposed to talk about some facts about TikTok, what you should know before you allow it on your phone or before you allow your child to withdraw it. I mean, to download it in their phones. So it is true. The, the fact is it is the latest app, the most hottest app, the fastest growing app right now. And if your child happened to tell you that everybody have it, then you better believe them because almost everybody has it, okay? Uh, it is the, the most downloaded app. By 2022, it was the most, then, by 2020, it was the most downloaded app. And uh, these are some of the facts. Maybe you should just have them so that, you know, I tell parents that when you have facts, challenging your child or talking to them can be very easy because they, they will know that you know. And having known that you know, they will be able to draw back to you for information. But if you are you know, you're not even sure. You're not even sure what is that. I was giving you a scenario of me and my girl I was telling her about, about a certain icon that she really adores. You know, the way we used to like Akina, those funny, funny music we used to listen to, Akina Westlife and all that. So even as she has this, these guys that she really adores, she loves their songs and all that. So when I was trying to tell her to, you know, she, these people are not so good. And then she tells me, you, you don't know anything about them. But the day I Googled, and I came to get all the, uh, I mean, all the facts about that group. Now we can discuss, now we can talk and she can be able to listen to me. And that is the truth. When you have facts, you are able to sit with them on a table and talk, especially teenagers, because they have facts. When you see them doing something, they know, they know what they are doing. So this is how, how TikTok is. It was developed in China. That is a fact about them. And then what happens there is that uh, there's a, a lip syncing kind of a situation of videos and dances. So like you, you copy a musician, how they are singing or how they are talking, something like that. And you can make your own video, you can connect with other people, you can comment and you can follow them. That, those are facts about TikTok. But then what are the dangers of TikTok? Hmm? What you need to know, what are the dangers of TikTok? Can you be able to see my app, uh, my slides clearly from your end? Somebody can just tell me. Yes, we can. Thank you. All right. So some of the facts, something that you need to know is that sexual predators prey on children a lot or, or rather on minors a lot on TikTok. So what they normally do is that they would um, go into your child's profile because they open, they open the profiles. And even as I'm going to tell you about point number two, they go to your child's profile and get the videos that they have made themselves. You know, they, they are able to make videos and then they start dancing. They also go and 
synchronize themselves into those videos. It's about technology and all that. And then they dance with your child alongside. So at the end of the day, such a video can go viral. It can go viral. Such a video can be used to manipulate your child, okay? It can be used to manipulate your child. And that is why we are talking about cyber, cyber bullying. Because that app, uh, which is TikTok, its profile is, uh, it has a default of being public. You know, the way you go to, um, if you have Facebook account, you know how we, we, we have to go to the setting to make ma even uh, a lot of things private. For example, tagging. If you don't want anybody to tag you, you have to go to the setting and change it to be maybe only your friends can be able to tag you, not just anybody. And then uh, you can also un be able to untag yourself if somebody tags you in a video that you don't want. So in this, in this uh, TikTok, the default is public. I mean, when your child makes a profile, her profile is very public. Anybody can, can tag themselves. Anybody can tag themselves. And um, that, uh, that aspect actually gave them, um, it was called what? They were, they were kind of, um, they were sued. Yeah, they were sued because of letting that thing to be on default. The fact that when your child uh, register, gets the app, becomes part and the parcel of the TikTok family, then anybody can become their friend. Anybody can become their friend. They don't have an option of changing it. And it is just by default. So when your child download the app, you need to do with them that. You need to go with them and fill in, when you're filling up the, the, the setting part to make everything to be private, make everything to be private. All right, so TikTok also has <clears throat> uncensored content. And that is something that is in almost every social media account in every social media account there are contexts that are not censored you like we've been having a group and all of you have seen how uh, when we we are in the group somebody just put something you know outrageous now remember these are teenagers they are in their curious stage if something like that was posted to them they'll just click on and move on and they're like eh, let me see what's happening and then the next thing is okay let me just stay here and see what will happen then the next thing they are seeing something that is enticing and enticing. And that is the way the child is entangled into maybe pornography, into maybe groups that they don't understand. Yeah, so that aspect is there on TikTok. So you need to really caution your child when they're using the app, not to click on any button, all right? They have to, to maybe confirm with you, confirm with you. So it also collects your data. And that happens with every other social media account they're able to collect your data. But when it comes to a minor's data, they are supposed to ask, you know, give parents, the, uh, like uh, give the child the aspect of, this one can only be said yes or no by your parents, but they don't give that. TikTok does not give them that, that option. So they're able to do everything on their own, okay? They're able to give any information on their own. Sawa sawa. All right, let me go to the next thing, which is now your role, your role as a parent. Uh, you can see the, 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 the photo that I've shown there. Most of the time when your child is on phone or on their gadget, they are so busy, they are so busy. And then when you ask them, okay, what are you doing? Then they just show you a very awkward photo, you see? Like that, that guy will show like, ah, I was just watching how this cat is walking. And you're like, have you been watching that cat walking all that time? Yeah, that happens with the children nowadays. So the, you, you have to be very vigilant, very vigilant. Why? Because, you know, as we all know, internet never forgets things. So you need to tell your child, you know, your reputation really matters. And those are the kind of things that you're going to tell them tomorrow. Your reputation online matters because it can be used later on, even by your boss for employment. We have seen such kind of things bringing trouble to people. Yeah, you just posted, or rather you just tag yourself on something and then it brings you issues later. So you need to really tell them about reputation. And uh, you as a parent also, you need to set rules and consequences. If it is time limit, put it, put a time limit, let them know that they can only use their gadget maybe 30 minutes or one hour in a day and that's it. Because the more they watch, the more they are likely to land on any ancestor and censored what? product so you better put a, a time limit you better set rules even as they are coming home let them see like you know you 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 want them to go out there and socialize and do something else 
maybe do house, house chores and all that. Not all the time they're on gadgets a whole day. Yeah. So, and again, do random monitoring. Do random monitoring on their gadgets. Check which app are they on, which are, whom are they chatting with. And you can do it very randomly. Yeah, very randomly. And you can be able to help them. You can tell them now here, you have uh, entered into this group and this conversation is not so good. So get into their gadgets randomly, especially those of us who have children in high school, it ha it's happening a lot. Those who have children in class eight. Yeah, and uh, right now you know them. It's not like us, uh, my, my girl was just telling me the other day that me, I am sure I can be able to meet my classmates after maybe the next, you know, after the next two months after exams because they have maybe the social media group. So right now they have the grouping, they've already made themselves, they have contacts, they have phones. So it is very easy. Uh, so do the random check. If possible, put a child protection app that can tell you when your child is logging into, into a certain account. And again, caution them of their uns unsuspected what reality. Uh, sorry about that the reality of sexting sexting um i'm going to tell you about it later but tell them the reality of it you know many people many children think that they are not watching pornography or rather many people even think my child is not watching pornography the other day i was just watching i know most of us have played this music it's called um uh it's a, it's a music from uh, harmonize that guy is called harmonize and he's he was playing this music called um Happy birthday, happy birthday, something like that. I know all of us, in one way or another, we may dance in Goma because we are thinking it's just a beat, it's just a music. But yesterday, I just sat down to just listen to the lyrics of the, of the song and, the, and watch the video, and watch the video. That is basically what we call sexting because it is showing of, or, you know, you're passing either nude or semi-nude photos or text messages uh, that are, you know, that are sexually oriented to the other person in form of a text, in form of a video. You know, the way nowadays people are sharing videos. And there's another song, they, there's this musician they love so much. Mm, it's called Bahati. Yeah, Bahati is one of their icon. And um, there's no song that Bahati will drop and they fail to listen to. That is the reality of things. And if you listen and watch those, that is actually basically what we call sexting, nothing else. It's nothing else. It's basically the aspect of passing nude or semi-nude photos or videos to the other person. The people who are dancing in that video, the way they are dressed, what they are singing, everything is just something to stimulate, you know, to stimulate your body towards sex. And imagine these bodies are very young. These bodies are very young. So they, whatever they are pushed into is what they are going to do, is what they are going to do. And um, stolen identity, it's very easy for your child identity to be stolen online. It's very easy. That is why now we have scammers, people who, who you know, they hack your, they hack your account and, and do very funny things. So can you imagine if it is a child, if it is a, it is a child, and then that, that whatever they have hacked, I mean, and maybe placed on their profile, then it is sent to their friends. Then the next thing we are talking about is cyberbullying, because now maybe, this person tells them, okay, if you don't uh, do this to me, I am going to pass it around to your friends. So the, their identity can be easily stolen. And also scams and frauds. We cannot talk much about that. We know those are things that are happening. Um, so even as I conclude, so what's up tomorrow? Tomorrow we have that class. And as I've told you what sexting is all about. And uh, sexting is pure pornography pure pornography, meaning that it is just an aspect of sexual stimulation. At the end of the day, this child who is 10 years, 11 years, this child who is 13 years, is stimulated sexually. So they want to experiment. Remember, they are so curious. They want to experiment. They want to explore their bodies and all that. So those are the things that we are going to talk to them about tomorrow. We are going to tell them about the dangers of sexting and how uh, sexing can affect them, you know, can affect them spiritually, can affect them mentally, can affect them, uh, yeah, it can affect them spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and even legal-wise, even legal-wise. So don't make your child miss. It will only cost 250, but if you can sponsor a child or two, 
well and good. May God bless you for that. And uh, if you can have another parent on board, God bless you for that. Bring them on board so that we can enlighten them what they're exposing themselves into when they are engaging in those music. There's a, an aspect of music that I just want to share with you. Um, there's a hormone that we have, it's called oxytocin. This hormone is the hormone that is produced during sex and is the same hormone that is produced during music. That is why music and sex are so easily connected. So if a child continually watch music and you, we've seen even these things going viral, children dancing in a very funny way to music, even gospel music, but the way they're dancing, you're like, wait a minute, because the, the, the sexual aspect of it and the musical aspect of it are, you know, are the same level. So if we don't censor them, if we don't censor them of what they're likely to land in, what they're likely to be watching at that time, imagine we, we, our children will also be in that statistic of between 10 to 19 years old who can, who are already mothers or are already pregnant. We are going to be talking about, you know, children who are engaging in sex and alcohol anyhowly. That is how bad, how bad our society has become. So with all that many, 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 many remarks, I want to conclude by saying that an informed child is actually an empowered child, okay? The more information we give them, I hear parents asking me, At her, hey, my child is too young. Don't you think that to Kimweka kwa your class, to talk about Nampati ideas of what to do? Believe me, we need to give them that. We need to censor them as early as possible because these are things that they are seeing every day. They're either learning in school, they're being taught by their, uh, their, by their peers, or they're even watching them in our houses, okay? The, I mean, even the... the Matatus that we use today, the music that is played there, the videos that they are watching, it's already enough indoctrination. It's already enough indoctrination. So we cannot say we are playing safe by not speaking. Not failing to speak is actually brewing another disaster. So with all that many, many remarks, I want to say thank you very much. And I want to welcome you all for an open session what are your most, um, the most fearful feeling that you usually have for your child? And maybe you can also give me a remark of, of what we have uh, maybe learned together. You can maybe tell, share with us your experiences of some of these things. And uh, to put us on that, we can also, we can um, maybe go, each one of us, uh, Agnes Karibu Sana, Celine Karibu Sana. Thank you so much, Sarah. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Agnes? I'm fine. I think we're going to do it, Sarah. Na kujua? Yeah, you know me very well. <laughs> From where? From Kibera Laini. Wow, okay. As in to Penina, I know you know Pesh. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now I've connected. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you too. Now, my yeah. question is, how mm -hmm. do I start that, uh, that talk? I really want to know because I'm actually not in the country right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just looking for options on how I can start engaging my elder son. Mm -hmm. In this sexual talk, as in a where he mm -hmm. can't hide anything from me. Yeah, I'm just looking for it, but I'm like, ni metafuta all angles. Mm. Well, um, thank you, Agnes. That is a session by itself, a whole one mm -hmm. by itself. Um. But basically, what I will say is uh, one formula that we normally use is give them facts, have facts, have values, and have uh, truth. Okay? Yeah. When you have all this, let's say, for instance, you want to talk to them about pornography. You have facts about pornography. Then you have your own values. Remember, we always say that values are not learned. You know, they are copied. 
So you cannot tell your child, don't drink, and maybe you come home drunkard, okay? Or maybe you tell your child, um, don't abuse people, and maybe you're the one who shouts at people, even abuse them. So values are actually copied. They are not learned. So once you have your own values, values uh, you have your own values. And that is why I was saying at the beginning that we always also have a class where we help parents to clarify values, okay? Clarify their own personal values because most of us have come from a background whereby to me, to lifanyo afanyo vitu, to lifanyo afanyo vitu. So right now we are trying to unbuild ourselves. We are trying to unbuild our, uh, to, un to remove ourselves from a situation. So the important thing is to actually be able to clarify the values that you have. That is a personal thing. And then be able to do what? To relay them to them. That is a whole session by itself. I think we will hold it, keep on on the group. We will do a session on that. And then now getting facts. Getting facts, uh, your facts right. And I always tell parents that facts are very different from truth. Why? You can have a fact that uh, like right now, it is a fact that girls are being impregnated at the age of 10 to 19 years. It is, it is a fact that is there. But it is also true that there are girls who are abstaining, okay? There are girls who are abstaining. So you, you, you are able to give them facts and you're able to give them what? The truth. Another aspect when you want to start talking to your child is the timing. Where do you begin this talk? I think Agnes, um, to so have two sessions full, but lazimu angalizo vitu zote, where, when, and how. Izo zote, we will learn them in one session. But basically, when you're talking to your child, you have to be, to have, first of all, talk to yourself. Talk to yourself and put yourself in their, in their shoe at that age. Because I know most of us can go back. Nandio inatufanya, most of the time we are unable to talk. Because when you remember that time, the way you are talked to about your sexuality, ama the way somebody talked to you about, about boys or about girls, it just threw you off balance. Yeah, and so because of that fear, most parents really fear or they, they don't know how to begin the conversation. But once you, 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 you master those facts, you master the, 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 the style of doing it, it will be very easy. I have done it myself. I have seen it working. And it is something that is very easy. We are going to have a session on that. Uh, it was supposed to be in the mix of this, but I knew time would go too far. So I said, let me cut it and then I'll put it in another session before or maybe after the open school, we can have another session in our group of parents for parents. And then we, we, we learn how do we begin the talk? How do we do it? When and where? Grace, have I, hel Agnes, have I helped? <laughs> yes, you've really, really helped. I'll mm. keep myself locked in the group so that I can... <laughs> Keep yourself ready. there. Yes. So that I can also learn mm. and talk to him. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. willing, ready to learn. Yeah, it will help you. It will help you. Just keep it in the group because uh, the group is not for the teenagers, the group is for us parents. So we are okay. able to open it up for so many other things that, you know, are challenging us when it comes to sexuality. Talk <sighs> with our children. Thank you very much. Mr. Seth, maybe a remark, and then we can get a remark maybe from Selin. I think uh, uh, all I can say is thank you. Uh, this is a much needed uh, uh, discussion, mm. much more with our children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it's amazing because uh, uh, in the last uh, few weekends, mm -hmm. that's something that, that we've been dwelling on in some schools where, where, where I live. Mm -hmm. And uh, you discover that uh, it's, it's, it's a dire need. Yeah. Our, youth are, our, 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 our youth are so lost in that area, so lost mm -hmm. without help, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. I think uh, it's, it's, it's a good, uh, it's, it's, a very, it's, it's, it's a timely, uh, uh, kind of engagement that we need. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Selin?
Hi, hello. Hi, <laughs> we can hear you now. Thank you so much for this opportunity. That has been quite an eye opener. I know yeah. to so many parents here, mm. and I wish we would be a great number of parents here j mm. just for this day. Our teenagers and the ones that are around us. Mm. Okay, mm, you asked about the deepest fear mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. concerning teenagers and and with maybe the the online stuff. Mm -hmm. My greatest fear is I'm not always around my children. Mm. And you know we have been having stories of children who have been taken well care of by the parents. Mm. They've been raised in churches. They've gone to good schools that are taking care of them. Mm. But then somewhere along the way, you find that they just have gone astray. Mm. And it's, it's such a distress to so many parents. Yeah. And I always think about, what if it's only a second that I'll be with my child, a certain day, a certain mm. second that I'm absent and something happened that confused them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's my my my, my number one worry that mm -hmm. not always there with them and I don't know who they are going to meet I don't mm -hmm. know who chatting with on their phones mm -hmm. uh, about us supervising them um, we do that yeah parents do that but not all of us are able to do that mm -hmm. okay the, the kind of criteria that I always use on my kids, I have two teenagers. Mm -hmm. And I think I have a system of always repeating myself. That mm -hmm. which I told them last year, I'll repeat and repeat and repeat again. Mm -hmm. So that if someone tries to confuse them yesterday, at least they'll remember, ah, mommy is here. And mm -hmm. maybe that the following day will also, also be there to repeat the same, same stuff that I talked to them. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Know that I'm not always around you and mm -hmm. help your children, your, your, your peers, your friends, your schoolmates, your churchmates, share with them that which you learn. You learn. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think I've learned something from you mm -hmm. on matter sex, sexting. sexting. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use it so, so, so much on my kids and I know it's going to help them. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you too, you're welcome. And thank you for registering your two teens. They are on board, so thank, thank you so you. much for that. Yeah, Rahab, maybe a remark? And maybe your fear when it comes to parenting, especially young adults? Uh, I think my, my major fear is uh, the thing that uh, it's like we, we don't have a fence, if there's a word like that. So mm -hmm. when it comes to things like information, there's so much information out there. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, children from, you know, from other households, you know, you're not parenting them. So my worry is what have they been, you know, how, what are they being taught? Mm -hmm. And at times, I think where I'm at right now, my son is kind of a loner. Mm -hmm. In terms of he only has, um, I think, one friend because mm -hmm. they're together and then if it's near the estate i prefer him even playing you know with the two small babies the one one changa mm. i prefer him playing with those ones than this this uh 10 14 16 because you know there's a time i discovered uh he was learning a couple of you know funny things mm. so but i think that's my greatest worry that there's no fear there's no there's no fence there's no like boundary to mm the amount of madness out there mm -hmm. uh, i think that's the major one which one else i think that's the major one mm -hmm. and I, I am glad i joined the session just learning about i even didn't know what sexting is mm -hmm. so now you're talking about those music and i'm like i'm always telling my son those things are circular music don't watch them mm -hmm. they are being introduced into into some crazy thing mm -hmm. anyway yeah i think this knowledge is really important and the, the bit of uh, just giving, you know, the children the facts that they need. Mm -hmm. But then now I'm wondering for like, uh, for like now the kids in the, the kids that I, that I, that I mentor, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I think they are really deep into this secular music. So now, where, how how would I start, or where would I start? Well, um, first thing is the facts. Like I've just said, give them facts. When um, you know what when. when uh, the first time I heard about the, the hormone I was telling you about is called oxytocin. Mm-hmm. Being connected with music. I had it in a present worship team. Okay. And they were, they were just cautioning us. The pastor was telling us, you know, the, the way it is easier for present worship members to fall into sin. I think most of us here are Christians. Mm-hmm. They, are, they, are, they, are, they are very... Uh, what do we call it? They're very vulnerable to sexual sin. It's because the, the same hormone that, you know, orient sex in human is the same hormone that brings out music. And that is why the devil has managed to use music to put, you know, young people into his place. You will hear, uh, see young people, they're in church. They are very much, they profess Christ. They're born again. But it, it, has, it is hard for them to get out of secular music. It is very hard for them to get of secular music because the devil knows that once they are there, them and sex is not so far. And once he introduced them to sex, them, them, and, them and sin is not so far. If, if at all uh, somebody can engage in sex, which is a sin, the Bible says it's a sin that we do against our own body, then there is nothing else we cannot do against our own body, uh, against ourselves or against other people. So uh, the, the devil knows. So the thing is to give them facts. Give them facts that this is this is the sin that besets you when you get yourself some uh, when you get yourself into this music. And I normally tell uh, teenagers when I mentor them, I tell them you can be able to create your own world. You don't have to look like other people. That is why we we normally have the self awareness classes for them. Unfortunately, for the for for this class that we are going to have tomorrow, because of the way COVID has thrown us, you know, on and off, we have. Um, the holidays are, are, you know, are very crazy. They are, they are kidogo kidogo. But when we, I think in December, we'll just have a major, a major maybe session with them, a one-on-one. We just take them through self-awareness. Because once you are aware of yourself, and these are testimonials I've gotten from so many young people. Once you are aware of yourself, then you know what to do and what not to do, where to go, what not to, where, what not to do, where not to go. And you also know your focus. What are you built of? What do you want to become? What are you, you know, when you have all those things around you, then you can be very selective. You can be very selective on what you watch, what you hear, the people you, you, you walk around with and all that. And it is possible because I've seen it happening to the young people, some, some of the young people that have been able to work with, especially in the past, like three, four years, it is very possible. So Rab, nothing is lost. Nothing is lost. I, I believe, I always believe that God is able to salvage the remnant from the whole, you know, the way it looks so chaotic. He still can be able to salvage his remnant from it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate. You're welcome. Okay, Agnes, please continue. Pray for us, then we close. Father, we want to say thank you for this thing that you have given us, dear Lord, as parents to connect in the Zoom meeting to us. Father, we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you may guide our steps, Lord Father, to guide our children in this journey, mighty God. So much is happening in our daily lives, Lord Father. We are so busy with our without our without involving our children in so many things, Lord Father. And the world has taken place, Lord Father, to confuse their minds, Lord Father, and corrupt them, mighty God. We pray, Lord Father, that you may give us wisdom and knowledge, Jesus Christ on how we are going to deal with them, Jehovah God. Let us give us your word, Lord Father, to connect with them in a special, Lord Father, with a caring heart, mighty God, Father. Let your wisdom, Lord Father, rest upon them, Jesus Christ, Lord. Each and every sound of the enemy, Lord, that comes to steal, kill, and destroy Jesus Christ, we denounce it in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We mm-hmm. soak our children in the blood of Jesus, and we declare your peace, Lord Father, your knowledge, Lord Jesus, your wisdom, Lord Father, to know what is good and right in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord Father, that the enemy will not have a place for the, to steal them, Lord Jesus, and corrupt their minds, mighty God, Father. Give us a heart of loving, Lord Jesus, God, 
towards our children, Lord, to take care of them, Lord Jesus, and to work with them in this journey, mighty God, Father, until you say it's, it's right for them to walk on their own, mighty God. Mm. Guide us, dear, dear Lord, Father. Guide us in each and everything, Lord Father, that we are planning for the session in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, for tomorrow's section, mighty God. I pray, Lord Father, that you may be the head, Lord Jesus. And mm -hmm. as we, they are being taught, Lord Jesus, let your will be done, Jehovah God, Father. And may you receive all the praises, Lord Father. We are not doing it for ourselves, to glorify ourselves, Jehovah Lord, but also to glorify you, to honor you and to honor you, Jesus Christ. Walk with us, Jehovah God, in this journey. Walk with us, Lord Jesus, and let your favor and mercy, Lord Jesus, wisdom and knowledge, Lord Father, rest upon us, mighty God. Even as we lay our bodies to rest, mighty God, we surrender mm -hmm. the life of the evil life, Lord Jesus, and any form of evil attack, Jehovah, we denounce them, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, Jehovah God, and we declare your, your kingdom, in our night, Jehovah God, take control, take control over each and everything that we do, Jehovah. Thank you, Master, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, I do pray and trust in you. Amen. 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 Be blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Agnes. God bless you too. Amen. And I thank you all for coming in. Please, uh, whatever nuggets you have gotten here, share them in the group so that uh, they can also know that we, we learned something. Any nuggets that you have acquired, just uh, post it as a remark in the group and even to encourage other people. So may God bless you and may you have a good night.